So what do you all think is the most complex delivery challenge in India? Take a guess. What's the most complex delivery challenge in India? Food, healthcare. Money orders, I don't think that's that difficult, is it? No one said Coke or Pepsi, they get quite far. What about a great example from the city of Mumbai? What's a great delivery challenge that is solved in this city of Mumbai using a cre <laughs> Dabba Wallas. Right? So you know how many lunches Dabba Wallas deliver every year? 75 million lunches delivered every year. Take DHL, courier company. They deliver about 125 million packages a year. FedEx a little less. But you know who delivers more than Dabawalas, DHL, and FedEx puts, put together? It's the routine immunization program. Last year, the routine immunization program delivered 400 million doses of vaccine to 27 million children in India. And those 27 million children were when they did get the vaccine, protected against 11 life-threatening diseases. Now, that is a true delivery challenge. <laughs> but that's only the beginning of it, right? Because unlike any of these other products that I've talked about, vaccines have to be kept in a cold chain right from the moment they're manufactured all the way until when they're given to that last child. They can't be too hot. They also can't be too cold. Only ice cream is sort of like that. But unlike ice cream, vaccines have to be delivered using a long needle. Very, very threatening, especially if you've ever held your own child, a newborn in your hand, and someone approaches with a long needle, your instinctive is to say, no thanks, because you're probably not familiar with the diseases that that person's trying to protect your child against. What else is true about vaccination? Vaccines have to be given at a precise sequence, not just randomly. Particular vaccines at birth, at six weeks, at 10 weeks, at 14 weeks, and nine months. No other product is like that, very complex. And then take Coke or Pepsi. Unlike these, vaccines have to reach every last child in the country, and that means reaching every last village in the country because every village has a child. And remember, if a village doesn't get a delivery of Coke, no one dies. So if you think of all of the hoops that we go through to deliver vaccines in this country, it's quite a bit. Vaccines are delivered across the length and breadth of the country. They're delivered by motorcycle. They're delivered by auto. They're delivered by boat. Uh, this is in Assam. They're delivered by donkey. They're delivered by yak. They're delivered by army helicopters in the Northeast. Why do we go through all this trouble to deliver vaccines? because vaccines save lives. More than any other intervention that we know of, vaccines are the most effective and cost-effective way of improving health. The reason why most of you sitting in this audience have probably never seen a child with measles or a child with smallpox, a disease that was eradicated in this country more than 30 years ago, is because of vaccines. Millions of children's lives are saved because of vaccines, but it's not just the saving of lives. Children who have had a full course of vaccines are much less likely to be stunted, much less likely to be malnourished, and much more likely to reach their full cognitive potential than children who have not received all of their vaccines. Now, getting all this course of vaccines to a child in this country costs just about 200 and 250 rupees. Don't you think that's a great buy to spend that money to save a child's life just with something as cheap as vaccines? Wouldn't you agree? Wouldn't you want that for your child? I certainly would. Now, the sad truth is that of the 27 million children that are born in this country every year, 35% of them don't get all of their vaccines. That 35% gets some of the vaccines, but not all of their vaccines, which means that we have 10 million children in this country who don't receive their full course of vaccines, who are at threat of life-threatening diseases. Now, that is simply unacceptable, isn't it? Now, just take the case of measles. 80,000 children die of measles every year, just this one disease, 80,000 children, and that is about a third of the global burden of measles. One in three children who are unimmunized around the world happens to live in India. 
And you know what the cost of a dose of measles vaccine is? Take a guess. 10 rupees. Don't you think that's good value, 10 rupees, to not let each of those to 80,000 children die? That's what we're really up against. So this is the challenge that we face. Now, I'm fortunate to work with a great team of 40 professionals who help the government plan and strategize and deliver the vaccine program. And of course, there's a great team within government that also does the same thing. Um, now, vaccines, running vaccines or delivering vaccines is just a business like any other in the sense that it requires purchasing vaccines, making sure that they're of adequate quality, making sure that your supply chains work, making that sure that your cold chain works, and making sure that the children who do get the vaccine are injected safely, training all those frontline health workers who do deliver the vaccines. It's about all the elements of a regular business, only much larger in scale, right? And this is the one business that you've never heard of. But think about it, this is the one thing that the government owes every single child in this country, the right to not die in the first year of life. I would say that's a fairly basic right, that this is what the government really owes uh, its children. Now, how do we really get the vaccines out? We use a, a massive array of cold chain points involving Iceland refrigerators and deep freezers like the one you're seeing. And we have 27,000 of these cold chain points across the country. They're powered by solar power, by diesel generators, or some of them on the grid. We also rely on a large range of, of frontline health workers, about a million of them who get the vaccines out. They, they're the ones who actually educate the mothers, get them to come get the ch child's vaccines and actually deliver the vaccines. And then we rely on incentives. For every child that is actually vaccinated, the frontline health worker, if she does get paid and the money does reach her, she would get paid about 150 or 200 rupees, depending on where she is. And finally, this is what my team has really been involved in doing, we use technology. And technology is a powerful tool for making sure that the children of this country have a 21st century platform for delivering vaccines which is up to the challenge that I've just outlined for you. Now, um, the typical method of keeping track of where the vaccines are is using registers like this. It involves someone spending a lot of time writing numbers and saying, I kept the vaccines at this temperature, this is how much I have. Now, any of you know, you know, if you've, if you've worked in any organization that people hate filling out numbers on, on you know, uh, ledgers like this. At best, they might, fill out some half of the ledger. At worst, they might just fudge all the numbers and fill out your entire ledger with numbers that don't make sense, right? So you've all faced that. What we're doing is now replacing that entire system, starting from Uttar Pradesh and Rajasthan, with an electronic vaccine intelligence network that essentially helps us answer three questions. Where are the vaccines? What temperature are they being kept at? And are the vaccines getting out into the field? With an electronic system, there's no room for fudging. Essentially, everything that's entered in has visibility all the way up in the chain, all the way up to the state capital, all the way up to Delhi. You know what else we have in there? Every refrigerator in the system will soon be outfitted with a temperature monitor, which means that every half an hour, and we already have this in about 1,000 cold chain points, every half an hour, that temperature monitor sends an SMS signal to a central server, essentially telling us whether that temperature is within range or not. Most vaccines need to be between two and eight degrees. If vaccines get too warm, that's not good for them, but if they freeze, even for a little while, they're finished, and then you're injecting the child with a completely useless vaccine. When we get that SMS signal, automatically there's a signal generated back, an SMS to the person in charge of that system, saying, look, your refrigerator is not within range. And if they don't fix that problem within half an hour, their supervisor gets an SMS. And if it doesn't get fixed within one hour, that person's supervisor gets an SMS. So see what we're doing in technology. Technology can be used for information, but more powerfully, in large-scale systems like the one we're dealing with, technology can improve governance. Because as we've seen with a lot of the talks today, when you have transparency and visibility up the chain, then you get good governance. Because when that last person at that last village knows that the person at the district headquarters, the state headquarters, and all the way up to Delhi might know what they're up to, that changes their behavior significantly compared to they just thought, oh, who really cares? I'm doing my stuff here, and they don't really even show up, you know, except for two years after and look at my register, and who really looks at my register? So 
that's really the solution that we have at hand. But even with all of this, we're still missing about 10 million children, right? So that's a lot of children who are not vaccinated. Now, these children are not like other children who do get vaccinated. Unfortunately, children who don't get vaccinated happen to be poorer, no surprise there. They also happen to be girls. I guess not a surprise, but really shameful that that is the case. And this is simply too important a program to leave just in the hands of either parents who need to be educated to get their child to a vaccination place, or the government, which obviously has its strengths and weaknesses in some places. The weaknesses are that the vaccine system doesn't really work that well. So is it really fair that we bet our country's future on the reliability of systems as they might function in these remote areas? And that's what determines whether a child survives or not. I don't think child survival should be a roll of a loaded set of dice. It should be a fair game, and certainly it should not be one that is fraught with the kind of challenges that we have for the children in our country. One and a half million children in our country die every year before the age of five. And I think this is quite preventable, and vaccines are probably the best thing that we can do for this. So you're probably thinking, well, what does one even do about this? Where are these children, by the way? So where do you think these children are? So some of the children are in remote areas. So they're in Rajasthan, they're in Uttar Pradesh, they're in you know, Arunachal Pradesh, quite far away and so forth. But many of these children, maybe a surprise to you, are right under your very nose. Remember the child that you passed when you were walking past a construction site a few weeks ago that was sitting outside playing in the sand? That child is probably not vaccinated. The child that's under the flyover that comes up to your car and asks for money? That child is probably not vaccinated. The dirty secret of our vaccination program is that in many places, a child in a rural area has a much better chance of getting vaccinated, particularly if they live in a state like Tamil Nadu or Karnataka or Kerala, than if they were in Mumbai, right? So they're right here. Then you might say, well, what can I really do? I don't know anything about vaccines, involve needles, maybe I should have medical training. Not true. As I've just explained to you, delivery of vaccines involves the same set of skills that many people use in sort of everyday life in the sense of, you know, if you have a job, say, working in an energy sector, a lot of the challenge we have is making sure that the energy supply to our 27,000 cold chain points is regular. If you work in renewable energy, there's a role for you right there. If you work in supply chain, I, I hope I've made the case that that's pretty obvious. Transportation, everything about vaccines is about transportation. And finally, if you're just an individual and you're thinking, well, what can I do? What you can do is, next time it's your child's birthday or the birthday of a child that you know, fine, get them a birthday card. But what you can also do is maybe go out and get the child a vaccination card. Maybe get 10 other children a vaccination card. Ask your maid or their dri your driver whether their children have vaccination cards, and very likely they probably don't. Make sure they get the vaccination card because that is what determines if they've received their full complement of vaccines. What you can also do is join the Million Children Challenge, which is about to be released in a couple of weeks, and this will give you additional ideas on what you can do within your own communities to make sure that more children are actually immunized. Let us celebrate every child that is immunized in this country. I think it's a, every child's right to be immunized, and when that child gets immunized, that day that they get immunized is the beginning of the rest of their life when they're not at risk for dying, for something that could cost as little as 10 rupees. And go back to my first question, which is, what does it take to vaccinate 27 million children in this country? Not a trivial challenge, largest birth cohort in the world. The answer is you, 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 all of you here, and myself, taking responsibility for something that is simply too important to be left in the hands of government. And I think we owe it to ourselves to live in a country where a child will not die for lacking a vaccine that costs less than a cup of tea. Thank you.